week we finish off making the indexing head for the lathe and I had a problem when I was making the holes in the indexing ring the chuck came loose on the rotary head and some of the holes were out of position so I have to remove the holes and start again but luckily everything turned out all right in the end so let's go into the workshop and see how we do it we're making the knob and the thread that goes into the back of this where the plunger goes in. This will have an M6 thread on, this will have an M8 thread on. And the next thing I've got to do is machine a knurl onto this, put the threads on and then part it off. I've just set my knurling tool up. I've put the speed on slow. Feeding in with the top slide. That's okay, that'll be okay for what I want. I don't want it too sharp, I just want to be able to get a grip of the bar. Change back now to my parting off tool. But before I part it off, I'll cut the threads. Now we'll change the die for a 6mm die. Now because I'm getting a lot of vibration, it's easier to saw the last part off. I'm holding the part in a ER20 collet. to set my radius cutter up to form a radius on this end. I've just set the tool roughly in the middle and whatever radius that is looks as if it will be okay for that. So I'll back this out a bit. I've checked underneath everything's clear. where the knurl is because it's, it's a, a rough edge. So it takes the rough edge off and I think that's finished. So we've got dome on the back, knurl and two threads. The 
size of the tap the drill has to put too much force on. The 8mm thread that screws in. Okay, I'll put the plunger and the spring in. There's the spring and the plunger. Now the end of the plunger needs a couple of spanner flats, so we'll do that next. See if I tighten this, the plunger moves forward. If I slide it across, I can put a row of holes in here in this disc, and then the plunger should go. I haven't tightened it up tight. The plunger should go down and off, which it does on there. To it's touching the chuck at the moment. The hole will be shallower than that, so it will grip into the hole to locate. Then just turn it to undo it. I've done away with the spring. Um, the spring I had, there wasn't enough tension in the spring to push the plunger out. You see the plunger slides in and out. It doesn't need the spring really. So it will slide out to that far so you can move whatever you want. Now as you push it in and start to tighten up on this screw, it feeds the plunger forward. So I had to put those two flats on so I could get the spanner on so I could tighten it up on the end of the shaft. But you can see there, if that was a hole with a, with a countersink in here, that would easily do it. I may have to shorten the end of the plunger, but I'll do that in the lay, just run a foil over the end. But I won't do that until, you can see that's free enough in there. So this screw screws into the back of the plunger and you, and until it locks up. And you just have to adjust it to give you the length that you need. Well, the next job is to mark out the position of the rings on the outside. So what I need to know is where can I put the first row of holes. I just painted some marking out blue on the edge of the indexing ring and then I'm going to use this plunger just to rub across mark a line. But I've just switched my computer on it's running XP Windows XP the program I've loaded is Mac 3. This uh, program is used to run the CNC machine and all I'm running at the moment is my uh, indexing head the electronic indexing. Now that's this reading here which I can zero. This is in degrees 360 degrees 
So all I do here is feed in the amount I want to move and this will move around that amount. I've not used this indexing fixture before so what I want to check is the accuracy on the on the rotation. So I've zeroed my dial indicator on this jaw face. Pull the dial indicator out, still set at zero. And now I'll rotate that 360 degrees. That should move. It should stop when the jaw gets back to the top. That's better. Must have moved. So that's on zero. What I don't want to do is drill through here into the chuck. So I'm just going to use a feeler gauge under there to feel when it's coming through. I've set the speed to a thousand RPM. Let's have a look how that goes. The drill has just come through and it's 10 thou from hitting the chuck. So let's have a look at the depth. I think that's deep enough on there for a countersink for the plunger to line up on. So if I slacken off the clamp and then index it, I want to put 24 holes around there. So I'll just index it to the first position and see what the gap is between the holes. So I need to move. 15 degrees so that's the spacing so I'll lock that up there and drill the next hole to the next position see this is the finished indexing ring. I'll well, confess I've had to reduce the width of the ring because the first row of holes I put in, unknown to me, the chuck had come loose on the indexing head and the last few holes were about an eighth of an inch out of line and there's, there's nothing, once you've got them out of line there's nothing you can do. So what I've done is machine it off and read on another set of holes making sure that the chuck was really tight on the indexing head. When I'm using this indexing head it's best if you use it with the back gear uh, in neutral as it were between the two gears because you can once you select the right position you can spin the chuck easier plus the interlock will stop you putting the power on when you've got the pin in. So the way it works you just I'll have to number these up as well I suppose. You just uh, start wherever you want to start, tighten up the pin and you can see the pin goes in, 
till it, till it locks and I've just checked the one and there was still some gap at the back just check this one yeah it's not touching on the chuck it's touching on the countersunk part so that's locked the chuck up solid so you do your machining with your your uh, tool post drill or whatever you want to do and then you decide to move to the next position so you just unscrew this what I would do is probably use some of these felt tip pens that you can mark the positions there are 24 holes so that will give me a combination of I can do a two-sided, a three-sided, four, six, eight or twelve so if you wanted to do four you have to move it six holes so there's one, two, three, four, five, six come round to there put the pin back in it's lock solid machine whatever you want mark the chuck under the pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there put the pin in locks mark that chuck there these pens are whiteboard pens so you can rub the marks off do your machining and then come out to the next one with 24 holes I have 7 combinations of different hole patterns. If I'd have machined 12 holes I would have had 5 combinations of different hole patterns. So depending on how many holes you put on your indexing ring. And of course if there was 12 there'd be quite a big gap between the holes so you, you, you could have probably put another maybe gone up to 36 and that would have given me eight different combinations but the main ones you want are probably going to divide it by two or three if you put the flats on something to hold in a Jacobs chuck four if you want to make a square six or eight a hexagon or even twelve or twenty-four I'm annoyed that the chuck came loose on the milling machine but you learn from your mistakes it won't happen again all in all I think that's it's made a nice neat job use something that was scrap and if I need an odd number of holes for something I've still got room on the side here to put another set of holes in and to do that you just unscrew the unlock move it along to wherever the holes are and do it back up again well that's it for today thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it hope that's useful and if you liked it why not subscribe look after yourself and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering <laughs>